Hi everyone, my name is Nuria and this is my crafting journey. For today's video, I'm going to show you the magic of pattern contouring to create any neckline that you've ever dreamed of. Have you ever felt that you finally managed to get your perfect fitting top pattern? I finally made it. Perfect fit. And then you thought for yourself, now that I have it perfect, I'm going to go and cut a very sexy deep V neckline and you go for it and you just ruined your pattern. I ruined it. Well, that happened because you didn't account for all those spaces that your body has. And you should have thought about that before cutting into your pattern. So in this video, we're going to talk about all those spaces and how to account for them. Normally, when you get your basic top pattern, you have different tension points. So you have, for example, your shoulder and your bust. Your fabric is covering those two tension points and is pulling so you don't have the space, for example, in here. But when you cut through the neckline or through the armholes, then you don't have those tension points anymore and your fabric tends to go in those holes and also you have extra fabric in there. So what we have to do is to rotate those tension points and this is what I'm going to show you today by just creating some guidelines into your basic top pattern. What you're going to need is the basic top pattern that if you don't have it, it's about time that you get it. So go to my other video that I'm going to link up here and then come back. Afterwards, you're going to need a long ruler and a small ruler. If you don't have those, it's okay. We have some standard measurements for those holes. So it's fine. After we create the guidelines, I'm going to run you through some examples. I'm going to do eight different necklines so you get familiar with them. That's about it. Let's get into it. We're ready to start with the guidelines and probably you have something like this if you follow my pattern. And what we want is that all the darts are in the waist dart. So here you have one shoulder dart and one waist dart. I'm going to show you how to fix that. First of all, cut to the waist dart. And now it should look like this. Afterwards, make a cut through one of the lines of the shoulder dart without crossing the bust point. Like this. Now we get some tape and we hide this dart. We can transfer any dart to any position always rotating through the bust point. One last thing that you'll have to do is redraw the shoulder line so it's nice and smooth and crisp. And that's it. I'm going to try and make this boring process as fun as I can, okay? So we get our measuring tape and you have to follow the same instructions on the body and on the paper. If I say nipple on the body, I mean bust point of the paper, okay? We're going to start by drawing the bust circumference on our pattern. This is from our nipple till the end of our bust. Once we have that measurement, we can start with the guidelines. The first guideline is the neckline one. So we're going to put the ruler from the base of our neck till the bust point. And then we're going to see that there's a space here. It's very difficult to see on my body because I'm wearing this t-shirt, but you're going to see you have a space here. And then you measure this space and where the line that you just draw crosses the bust circumference, you add this length to the right and then you connect the end points. The second guideline is the shoulder one. We're going to go from the tip of our shoulder till our bust point. And you're going to see that there's a space here. We're going to measure that space on the widest point and this is the length we're going to add on our bust circumference. Third one, armhole is. We're going to put our ruler from our armpit till the bust point. And you're going to see an opening here. You measure that distance and you know the drill, you add that distance on the armhole line. For the fourth one, we have the guideline that is going to be used for empire styles. Put the ruler on our waist till our bust point. And you're going to see here, this space, it's very important that you don't push the ruler too much into your skin because then you're going to add extra centimeters that you don't want to add. Fifth guideline is between our busts. So we put it from nipple to nipple and we measure the distance from our skin to the ruler. In order to do that in paper, you should imagine that you're connecting the two bust points. And what you're doing is adding this distance divided by two, one on one side and one on the other side. So in the end, you have that measurement. Number six, shoulders. We're going to connect the tip of our shoulder with the base of your neck. Again, you can see there's a space here. I can put my finger there. Measure how much distance there is and you can add it in the middle of your shoulder. 
we're almost there, we go into the side seam. So we put the ruler from our waist till our armpit and we're going to see that there's a distance here. We measure that distance and we add it on the armhole line. We're done with the front so we can move to the back. We're going to start by putting the side guideline and the shoulder guideline also in the back. The back is a little bit different. We're going to try and find the back line which is three centimeters below the shoulder dart and we're going to create a perpendicular from that line to the tip of the waist dart. Where that line crosses the back line it's going to be our new tip of the dart. And with that we have front and back. Now we're done with the guidelines. It should look like something like this. It's a bit sunny, so I don't know if you can see. And there's one last guideline that I didn't talk about because it's only for strapless tops. It's basically you connect the bus point and the middle of the shoulder and then you create a line. And then you put together one, two and three. You sum them up and then you add that length into this last dart. I didn't add it because I thought this was just to save time when you have strapless bodies. But in this case, I think it's easier if you understand why they exist and why they're used. And then when you know how to use them, you can add this one. Now we're going to go into the necklines. I'm going to divide it in four. So we're going to do four different shapes, round, square, triangle, and heart. And that's it, let's go. We're going to start with the oval neckline. Draw the shape you want and you'll see how it crosses one of our guidelines. You can cut through that guideline and make sure you don't have excess where it crosses the oval so you don't see any paint. Remember to cut the excess on the shoulder also and to smooth out that curve. Now that you know how big your shoulder is going to be, you can transfer it to the back and then define the neckline of the back. You'll see how there is a little bit of your dart left. So what you can do is add that same length to the shoulder excess and then cut through it and you will have your neckline done. If we compare the before and after using the guidelines, you cannot see much of a difference because we only cut through one guideline, but you can see kind of a difference on the shoulders. The next neckline is also a round one and it's the boat, which is a bit higher than the other one. You always have to make sure that your neckline ends in a perpendicular angle to the center front. If you don't do that, you're going to see weird shapes coming up. The process we follow was more or less the same. We cut through the same guideline and we got rid of the shoulder excess. And in this case, I'm cutting below the dart. This is good because then we don't have to deal with any sort of excess. It can be seen also in the comparison. So now the back is a bit better than before. And the main difference is on the shoulders. You can see on the before that they are more open. The next neckline is a square. We're going to follow exactly the same process. In this case, I'm drawing it just about above the bus circumference. This makes it easier because then we will cut through less guidelines, of course. You will have to be very careful here and redraw the square shape because it will lose it once you remove that excess. Once again, we know how big our shoulders are going to be, so we draw again our back neckline and we remove the excess of the shoulders because I always forget. And again, we'll have to account for that excess dart and we'll measure how big it is and we'll transfer it to the shoulder excess guideline. You cut through it and we have it done again. For the before and after comparison, we can see most of it on the shoulder because again, we only cross one of the guidelines, so there's not much excess that has to be removed. And now we're finally getting into more difficult necklines. This is the camisole, which basically means that it's a top that is holded by spaghetti straps. This means that we're going to cut below our bus circumference and that we're going to touch more than one guideline. So we're going to touch three of them. What you're going to do here is remove completely the excess that you're going to have. Because in this case, we also cut through the armhole, we're going to have to remove that side excess. We make sure that the side seam is exactly the same on the front and the back and we can redraw the back line. And you're going to see that now our back line is going to cross the main dart. So what we can do is very easy. We just cut through the side seam and we also cut through that dart. Once it's open, what we do is just we get some tape and we cover the excess. And of course, we're going to have to redraw that back line because it will be different. 
make sure that where your necklines cross your center front and center back are perpendiculars otherwise you're going to have weird shapes and i'm sure everyone can spot now the differences the main one is the underarm and the sideline and now onto the triangle necklines we're going to start with the v neckline in this case the neckline doesn't cross our guideline in a very big point so we can leave it as it is for the back i'm going to show you another technique which is transferring the shoulder dart to the neck draw a line from your shoulder point to the neckline and then you open those and you can remove the excess of the shoulder dart you're going to see how that dart has been transferred to the neck and then you can redraw the shoulder and the neckline now you have the new back and you can just add the length of the shoulder and finish drawing your back line the before and after differences are not very big again it's on the shoulder but that's it because we didn't cross any guideline now into a sexy plunge we're going to create a triangle and we're going to make sure that we cross two of the guidelines the neck one you already know how it works you remove the excess and that's it and for the bus separation guideline we are going to do exactly the same we're going to cut through it and then make sure that you don't see any brown anymore when you use that neckline you're going to see that your shape really really is messed up so make sure that you draw it again for the back we're going to do exactly the same as we did before we transfer the shoulder dart into the neck and then we can redraw the shoulder the neckline and then measure the length of our shoulder and redraw however we want that back if we put the before and after next to each other we can see that the main difference is on the bust separation guideline on the before we have a lot of excess there and on the after it's smooth and tight and perfect and now onto the heart shape necklines we're going to create a heart you don't have to make sure here that there is a perpendicular line on the center front so that's okay and here i'm cutting a very high neckline so it only crosses one of the guidelines we remove that excess and then we make sure that we smooth that neckline and we also remove the excess on the shoulder we transfer the length of the shoulder to the back and then we cut through it here again i cut below the shoulder dart because i didn't want problems after that we remove again the shoulder excess and we're ready to compare you already know it by now probably but we only cross one of the guidelines so that means that the comparison is not going to be very 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 big at least on neckline on the shoulders you can see a bit more on the before that they are open and now on to the most difficult one the sweetheart strapless neckline what i'm doing is basically following the bust circumference and drawing this hard neckline we're going to cross absolutely every single neckline so make sure that you get the excess out from the side also from the shoulder the neckline and the armhole and don't worry if you cut through the bust point because if you just make sure that you put it the same exact place that it was before it's going to be fine once you're done with those three you can also remove the one that is for the bust separation and there again you're going to see how your shape is going to change a lot so you will have to redraw it later one last thing that you're going to take into account is that because it's going to be a strapless top it's going to need to be tight below your bust too in order to hold everything together so you're going to have to remove the excess of the guideline for empire style this will make that the waist dart is too big so what we're going to do is smooth that bust point a little bit by cutting through the first guideline once you've done that don't forget to label your pieces because you will forget otherwise after that we're going to create a curve to smooth that bust point and how much you smooth it depends on your bust you'll have to play around to get to know your breasts and what curve is better for them you can now transfer the side seam on the back and then cut through the back line you will have to remove the side guideline and then you already know you will have to cut through the waist dart and then remove that excess dart and redraw the back line 
because this is a strapless top normally you're always going to need boning in order to hold everything in place basically and that is why in the comparison i only have the what is after because the before would fall but basically you can see that everything is into place and feels comfortable I could have smoothened out a little bit more the bust point though. And with this, you're now a master of pattern contouring and you can do whatever neckline you want. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. Now jokes aside, it is very important that everyone understands here that I am not an expert, that I'm learning and that I'm showing you guys how my sewing journey is. Like I say at the beginning of every video or my crafting journey or whatever. For example, some things that I've seen while sewing the pieces is that I don't have the back fully figured out because there were still some little spaces and little darts that I didn't quite understand and maybe I had to rotate it a bit more, I don't know. Or another thing is that whenever you put all your darts into the waist art, you can see that the bust point gets very pointy and there are a lot of methods to smooth that out a little bit and I haven't touched upon that yet. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something. This really 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 meant a step up for me and my pattern drafting skills because before I was just messing up every single neckline that I was drawing and now I feel like I'm smashing them. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want more content, you can follow me on Instagram. I post there more regularly. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!